Welcome back. Let's continue having a look at the random number generator in Excel. Back to, uh, again, data analysis, random number generator. We'll leave it as one column with 100 numbers, and let's move on to our next option, which is binomial. Now, binomial is actually an extension of the last one, the Bernoulli, which I had you think of as being like a coin toss. We, for our p-value, would list our probability of success. Since I'm imagining this is a coin toss, I'll, I'll uh, consider a, a heads as being in our, what we're aiming at, our success. And I'll consider it a fair coin, so I'll make it 0.5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number of trials, which is 6. Now let me explain what this is before we, um, before we go and... Uh, click OK and get our output. This is saying that we're going to, this 100 means we're going to do this experiment 100 times. Each experiment will consist of the following. We're going to flip a fair coin and we're going to flip it six times. And what the binomial does is it counts a number of successes in those six, um, six trials there. So, if you were to take a fair coin, pull out a quarter, and flip it six times, notice, um, although you wouldn't expect it, you could find it came up tails every time. Now you're looking for heads, so in that case, you would, you would get zero heads. On the other hand, you could conceivably get six heads in a row. Or you could get anything in between zero and six, like two heads or four heads. That'll help you understand the output we're going to get. So finally here, output range. Um, I'll move it over here. Second row of column E. And okay, we flipped the coin six times. Um, this would be three heads out of the six, two heads out of the six. I wonder if I got, here's my perfect one, six heads again here. I don't know if I got a zero, but I'm sure if you're repeating along with me, some of you probably got a zero there. I just uh, not don't think that I happen to get a zero, but I got a few sixes. So let's label that. Binomial is normally just capital letter B. That's why I spelled Bernoulli out. And for binomial, what you do is we flip the coin six times, right? So we do N, the number of flips, six, and then we list the probability of a head. And I did a fair coin, so I had a heads as 0.5. I could have done 0.4 or, or any other probability. Okay, so there's, there's a quick look at the binomial. No, you know, binomial is useful for things other than just a silly coin flip. You know, it's just something where you have two outcomes. Could be the patient recovers or doesn't recover. You know, something worked or it didn't work. Hey, let's, let's have a look and let's continue. Oh, okay, um, move, move over. And um, the next one I'm going to do is Poisson, which it's perhaps a little bit less well known than, than like the normal or the binomial. Data analysis, random number generator, Poisson. Again, we'll leave it as um, one column of output, 100 rows of Poisson. The Poisson is a statistical distribution which is excellent for modeling arrivals. For instance, it can be used for traffic or people coming to a store. It just happens to be a very useful distribution. It has some nice theoretical properties which we won't get into here. But the main, the, the parameter for Poisson, lambda, is how many rivals occur on average. Like, let's put a, a 10 here. Now, with Poisson, when you're using it in practice, 
you have to have a specified time period you're thinking of. So, for instance, maybe there's um, maybe there's uh, an intersection somewhere way out in the country where hardly anyone goes, and so perhaps uh, every hour, ten cars go through that intersection. Then lambda would equal ten, but we would have to keep in mind that we mean per hour. Now wouldn't have to be per hour, it could be per day, but in an application, you know, you want to make sure you, you focus on what the time period is. And let's see what this output will look like. Put it in F2. Now remember, the average number of cars at this intersection is 10. And what do we get? Well, we get a fair number of values that aren't all that far from 10. You know, 8, 9, 10, 9, lots of, uh, obviously, any other thing could occur. So technically, you could have zero cars. I don't, I may not have that. You may. I can have a small number of cars, like, like I saw a 2 here. I also could have a um, number of cars that was quite a bit higher than the average of 10. But let's see what my biggest one is. I have a 19 here. So that's almost double the average. 18 is almost double the average. But there is no theoretical uh, limit on this. If I were to keep running this all day long, I might get like a 50 somewhere in this. But the point is, you won't get those large numbers very commonly, okay? Very infrequent. So if an intersection has an average of 10 cars per hour, the smallest it can have is zero. It's likely to have near 10, and occasionally it will have quite a bit more than 10. That's the Poisson. Oh, and um, back for the label here uh, for Poisson, the parameter would go in parentheses. So I, since I said 10 cars per hour, um, I would do Poisson with a 10 in parentheses. Now we have one more. Let's just see what it is first. The last one we have is called the discrete. Now discrete is quite different from these other distributions. The discrete gives you a great deal of flexibility in terms of setting up probabilities. To make this work, we have to first create a discrete probability table. So I'll have to back out of this in order to create that table. So somewhere over here, let's do that. Now, um, that, let's label one column outcome. Won't even hurt if I spell it correctly. And then on the second column, that's this list of probability. Now, for our purposes here, we will have to have a finite number of outcomes. And each of these outcomes will have some probability associated uh, with the outcome. Now, the probabilities will all have to add to 1, which is the same as, you know, 100%. So, oh, I don't know. Um, Let's, let's just do this. Let's suppose our outcome could be 0, or 1, or 2, or 3. And let's suppose a probability of a 0 is 0.2. I'm just making these up. Probability for 1 was 0.3. Let's say the probability of 2 was 0.1. And then the probability of 3 uh, would have to be point four because these have to add up to equal one which which they do all right now you could have a lot more outcomes but those as long as those probabilities add up to the number one now this is what you have to set up to use the last of our distributions the discrete and this one's really cool so much flexibility so we'll go here to discrete We'll leave this stuff the same. Now what you do is for the value and probability input range, 
you grab the table, not the labels, but you grab the table. So you do have to set it up this way with the outcomes and the probabilities in, in columns, not in rows. So I select all those values there. And of course, I'll put my outcomes, I'll just put them next to the table here. And when I do OK, I get that. So that's the example for discrete using the table that goes along with it. So if you look at this, notice that the most likely thing to occur should be a 3 because it has the highest probability. And I do see quite a few 3's in this. What I should not see very often would be a 2 since it only has a 0.1 probability. And well, funny, I actually see a couple of them in a row there. But then as I keep looking, I have to go quite a while to find another. You know, look at your data. It's fun to look at your own data and just see how it varies. That's how discrete works. Now I have one final thing I'll show you. Last thing. Go back to that random number generator. And let's do this same example here. Well, let's do the number of variables. We've never done this before. It's always been 1. Let's change it to 2. And let's just leave the output range where it was, because I don't mind it rewriting, and click OK. And notice, it basically did one column, should have 100 values, using that table, and it did a second column using that same table. We're not getting the exact outputs here, because it's totally random. But it's basically like repeating the experiment twice, which can be really useful in, in applications. And I'll be looking at some applications in, a, in another video. All right, so uh, I think that handles it for that very, very useful tool. Good luck using it.